Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail. As you can see, it's a little late my time, but I have no work tomorrow due to it being a holiday. So hey, woohoo for me. Though I wasn't here, I did two, only two fates with my machinist. I want to try them out. Yeah, they're fine. That's why the map has a little filled in, not too much. And then I got it. The Ark. Summon forth your Ark. The bipedal war machina disguised as a warship or airship disguised as a bipedal war machina, if you prefer. And guess what? If you love FF9, Yeah. Oh, I love Final Fantasy IX. Oh. The battle theme is amazing. Personally, FF9, the best Final Fantasy game. Wait, let me shrink that so no one can really see it. That's not, oh, actually, wait, what am I doing? We're gonna just close that for now. But yeah, let's continue the story. Walk Lamont, how you doing? It's been a couple hours. By a couple hours, I mean probably a day. Uh, let's have my coffee. All right. Traders of Happiness. Walk Lamont is ready to search, uh, search out the Dawn Servant's Elector. Not my finest, finest moment, I'll admit. But now that we're here, let's do what we came to do. Find the Elector. Allow me to propose a strategy then. Cryo, Alize, and I will speak with the merchants. Wakulmut, you and Aaronville might try approaching travelers and passerbys. Vader, pray investigate any of the other establishments will catch your eye. Should we learn of use, let us relay the, it to the third promise. Oh, I'm having trouble reading it, just started. Alright. Alright, I already did that yesterday. Alright, distillery worker. The Dawn Servant's Elector? I thought you were a new face in town. Here for the right succession, I take it. Me? I don't much care who sits the throne as long as they keep the turtle peaceful. People tend not to be in the mood to relax and sip our excellent mez mezcal once arrows and spears start flying, if you know what I mean. Speaking of which, would you like a cup? Uh, a joy shared is a joy doubled, I say. Uh, no thank you. Oh right, yes, you were asked about, a lot about the Elector business. Being but freshly returned from our tra my trading route, I've heard that there's a contest afoot, but not much else. Our, our head ledger Tobley could probably tell you more about it. Tobley, that's the name of the kid in Final Fantasy X, isn't it? Or am I thinking of a different Tobley? Hmm. I don't know. Let's see what the gemstone merchant sells here at the moment. I know you unlock more the higher your fate thing level goes. I'll do those off screen. All right, you're selling some alpaca fillets, hides, and pineapples. Oh, okay. Ooh, independent merchant. Let's see. Ooh, yes. What does the armor look like? I'm curious. All right. Your tank gear, let's see what you look like. I'm actually very curious. By the way, yes, I'm going to be playing this very... Listen, I like... Uh, it's okay, it reminds me of the Alamegan set I have. I don't like the color, but luckily it looks like you can dye it. But yeah, it's not my thing. Alright, let me see. I'm just going to check the body pieces now. Maiming, different color, striking... There we go. Striking is actually not bad. Scouting. Hmm. Okay. And then aiming. Okay. What do the spell casters look like? We'll do healing because I heal more. Okay. Uh, immediately. It's fine, but I do not like the color. So if I enable die preview. Oh dear. Here we go. You, yes, yes, okay. Now, if I were to make all black, 
Okay, it's not bad. What if I make it all white? Also not bad. It's not bad. Just, yeah, nah. Also, uh, with the collector's edition thing, I have the Chocobo brush, which I'll put in my glamour storage later. And I have the Garnet... A Choco, you got... Oh, yeah, I summoned my uh, Chocobo. Ignored the little guy. Yes, he's a yellow Chocobo. I never really messed with the color. And then I have Garnet, a.k.a. Dagger, if you go by the name. But Princess Garnet of Alexandria. So yeah, I have a feeling I'm expecting something Final Fantasy IX related in this expansion. I'm telling you why right now. And no, I'm trying to stay as blind up as possible, so I don't know much. One, I got two minions from the the, uh, the uh, special edition I bought. Zidane and Garnet. Two, I have a mount based off of a hidden fight, which become a summon if you try hard enough. The Ark. So I'm feeling like there's gonna be something Final Fantasy not related in this. And if there is, uh, cool. Impatient Porter. Electors? Oh yes, I've heard all about the Rise Succession. They're looking to put a new ruler on the throne, eh? Personally, I'm rooting for Zoral Ja. If the first promise wins, he'll look to expand our sphere of influence. That means access to more resources and more customers in the thousands column, potentially. So many new trading opportunities to spread happiness far and wide. Others have been coming around to my way of thinking, so I've begun crafting goods inspired by the resilient sun. Would you care to purchase something? Uh, no. No, I would not. Very well. You said you want to know about the Elector. I could help you, but I won't. I can tell you you're no supporter of Zoral Ja and his, or his policies. Alright, well that was fast. So far, all we know is Tobly. Mablu? Mablu. Mabla. Mablu. Ma yeah, Mablu. Mablu. Hello, I'm Mablu. Do you have any questions for me? Wah, 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 wah. Sorry, I don't know any, any about any electors. You should take a moment to see our prize alpacas before you leave, though. Oh, but be sure to admire them from a respectable distance. Get too close, and our nervous darlings may be tempted to spit on you. And that stuff stinks. It happens to a visiting buyer. It happened to a visiting buyer not so long ago. Tobley, the head of rancher, was so mad at me for not giving the proper warning. No one makes a mistake without Tobley noticing. He knows everything that happens on this ranch. Tobley, Tobley, Tobley. Oh, it's two people who have said something about Tobley, so I got a feeling we gotta find the Tobley. I'm gonna sprint. I'm not gonna bother popping a mount on town. Hey, Skywatcher. How's it looking today? Uh, looks like it's clear skies, but oh man, these shrouds having some thunderstorms later. All right, I think we're looking for someone named Tobley. You really have to watch yourself around these silver tongued peddlers. I almost bought a bottle of Mex Mexical and a stack of blankets, and then there was this enchanting ornament. Anyway, I did manage to learn that, that Tobley is the man to talk about the contest. Now, if only they share where this head ledger of theirs is to be found. Really? He's also the head rancher? Well, the Apalka Ranch is not far from here. I say we pay it a visit before the others return. Please don't get spit on, or I'm gonna laugh. Also, I've yet to get my wondrous tales, but I'll worry about that in my own time also. I'll probably choose a class when I do my wondrous tales, and I'll give that the XP, not Gunbreaker, because this is going to get the XP through the story. Because the story gives one class, your main class you're playing, through the MSQ. It gives it the all enough XP to play through the story unhindered. It's your other classes that you have to worry about. That's a whole other thing. I see no Tobley. I see Alpaca. <laughs> that is a lot of Alpacas. Still, we know the head ledger could be here somewhere. I can't let fear deter me. 
N not to say that I'm scared, of course. Yeah, sure. Excuse me, is one of these workers Tobley? Tobley, oh yes, he likes to mingle with the ranch hands and keep a Zen R and, and oh, it's a, okay, sorry, I had a little smudge on my screen, I was looking at I, I was really confused, R, I. He likes to, and keep an eye on things. I can't tell you which one he is though. You can, is this part of the contest? All I can say is that Tobley often mentions his favorite pungent subject. He also can't resist a, a profitable trade, though, who among us could, am I right? Still, if you bring him a very good deal, he might let his identity slip. Heh, <laughs> so it's like a game. Easy enough, all I have to do is offer Tobley a deal he can't ignore. No problem at all. You say that. Well, maybe one problem. I don't think my purse is deep enough to pay everyone we think might be Tobley. Let's ask some some questions first to narrow down the field. Alright. Great. We can meet back here and share our impressions. She's gonna get spit on, and I'm gonna laugh. Ah, uh, so it's not Mablu. But uh, oh, looks like I still have to talk to you. Okay. Hello. Hmm. Well, obviously I'm not Tobley. I mean, oops, I shouldn't have said that. You're meant to find out for yourself who Tobley is, or if an elector is even in the village at all. Good luck. Alright. Diligent. Ranch hand. Ah, a visitor from Cross Assault, if I'm not mistaken. Be warned, the alpacas will spit if you startle them. I suggest you keep your movement slow and deliberate. You, maybe. The beast regards you with wary eyes and twitching jaw. Backing away slowly might be the wisest action. Alright. Hello? Am I Tobley? Y yes that's me! Excellent work from the Third Promise and her entourage. Sharp instincts. Shall we commence in the right succession then? Absolutely not Tobley. I'll sniff out the head ledger and the heartbeat, you'll see. Yeah, you not him, I'll tell you that now. Oh. I mean, I'm gonna talk to you, I guess. Have you spoken with Yav... Yav... Yavli yonder? Yavli yonder? He loves alpacas dearly, but the feeling does not appear to be mutual. Now, this lot, at any rate. Boastful ranch hand. You think I might be Tobley? <laughs> well, maybe I am. All I will say is that in this village, none have reared more Paca than I. Alright, I think I got an idea who Tobley might be, just a guess. Hey, Garnet, just wait with me. I see we're both done with our interrogations. So, who do you think it is? I have my suspicions, let me hear your pick. I'm thinking it's the diligent ranch hand. Ah, the worker so intent on stable chores. I have my eye on that one too. Time to rip off the mask of our mystery ranch hand, so to speak. Oh man, I got, mmm. Could it be the guy who's bragging about the apacas? We know it's you, Tobley. And to prove it, I propose a deal. A generous sum of coin for confirmation of your true identity. Uh-oh. An offer I gladly accept. Oh, okay. I was worried there for a second. As you correctly guessed, I am indeed Tobley, head ledger of Wachupelo and head rancher of the family ranch. I'm also one of Galul's Jaja's chosen electors. Aha! In a place featured in the Tulialu saga, just as we thought. I was right to trust your instincts, and I wager this won't be the last time. Nah, uh, this is an easy task, at least. 
She found you out fair and square, Tobley. And I'm glad she did. We've been a pity. Would have been a pity had uh, her bid ended here. Ugh, can't read. Deducing the Don Servant's Elector was the first step of defeat. Too simple a task for this aspiring ruler, eh? Right. Not hard at all. Uh-huh. Well, it looks like everyone else finally decided to show up. Zorolja. I am told the head ledger, Tobli, is to be found here. You have to guess which one of us is Tobli. That's part of the test. Oh, wow. Wow, you just ratted yeah, him totally. out. Without even asking a single question. Very impressive indeed. Without amusing prologue out of the way, we can proceed to the actual challenge. Mm-hmm. Per the Dawn Servant's instructions, I was free to devise any manner of feat. I considered the number of possibilities in the tent column. But I think I have a good one. You must go forth and capture for me an alpaca. Don't you have a bunch already? Yeah. Everyone's confused. Like, while I've what? not had the best experiences with alpacas aren't they generally docile creatures that doesn't sound like much of a challenge <laughs> bring out the example is it like a 10 story tall alpaca oh yeah it's just an alpaca oh look at it this is a special kind of alpaca. Would you please approach the animal, Third Promise? Uh-oh. Who? Me? Well, it should stay calm if I stay calm, right? That's what Erinville said. <laughs> ah! The little monster spat on me. Ah, uh, oh, that stinks. I can't. But <laughs> 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 Creatures being both extremely curious and extremely cowardly. Press your luck when they're frightened, and you'll get a face full of spit, as you've all just witnessed. Has an awful stench, their expectoration. The globs contain half digested food, you see, making it an effective deterrent against perceived threats. Wild valley breed like this one are especially timid and can therefore be quick to lash out. <laughs> They're also especially hardy. Indeed. We take the rugged wild alpacas and breed them with our gentle domesticated stock. This produces the strong but beatable pack animals prized by our traveling merchants. <sighs> Oh, well and good, 
But did I need to bathe an alpaca spit for you to make your point? So, the task is to catch a wild alpaca. That is correct. But be warned that it is a feat easier said than done. I suggest you prepare well before you enter the valley where the creatures dwell. And by you, I mean the claimants only. Allies are not permitted to assist with the catching. Oh. The alpacas will help me judge which of you is worthy of receiving a keystone. So I'm to chase down a fluffy, spitting demon, and that somehow proves I'm fit to rule? <laughs> As I said, the Dawn Servant granted me the freedom to decide my challenge. We're and challenged. when you reach the end of the ride, I dare say you will understand why I chose what I chose. Very well. This won't take long. All right, brother against sister. Wait! Didn't I warn you this was easier said than done? There are preparations to be made, factors to consider. A beast is a beast. All yield to strength. Hey, leave your buddy here. I thought it was just them going alone. No allies. So far, this experience has done absolutely nothing to improve my opinion of alpacas. But that doesn't mean I can't do this. Revolting spit aside, they're just another animal. A spitting animal. Are you all right, Orclamart? We thought we heard you scream. Ah, <laughs> she did. The third promise does not scream. It was more of a startled yelp. A uh, scream, in other words. <clears throat> did you find the Elector? Oh, we certainly did. That's when you have Elf and other allies say, walk up to the alpaca to get a face full of spit. Aaron Vale would be too smart, and Kryle hasn't done anything wrong at this point. Yet. Aaron, yeah, Aaron Vale. Oh, nah, you wouldn't fall for it. I did say remaining calm was key, but the same rules don't apply to wild alpacas. So, this is sought after a lector. Zorloja puts me, puts me in mind of Garlemald's Gar own exalted son. Of the two, though, Xenos was undeniably more arrogant. Yeah, true. Judging by the volume of Wakulmoth's scream, alpaca ex... Excromet... Excretion, my bad. E actually, no, it's ex... Expectorish... Ex expert, eh, whatever. Must be a nasty odor indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alright, welcome up. I must go wash the nasty stuff off my face. I think I got all of it. But would you mind taking a sniff? Just make sure the stench... The stench has ruined my sense of smell. Uh, no, I'm good. I saw that look. Yeah, I'm not sniffing you. Ooh, we're gonna get some hand gear. The Feet of Gold. Aaron Vale wishes to discuss the Feet of Gold. Alright, immediately gonna do that. As Wokla help demonstrate, the Valley the Valley Apaca are wary of people. Getting close enough to capture catch one will not be an easy task. You might have warned me about that earlier. I have enough trouble with tame alpacas. How do you expect me to wrangle a wild one? 
With the proper saddle, we infused the leather with a relaxing scent that soothed the spitting beast. Wonderful. Give me one of those, then. Not for free? Hmm, have you... F yep. Have you perhaps forgotten we're clan merchants? If you want taming saddle, then you'll need to find a saddler and make them an offer. They will come cheap, of course. Crafting a saddle will cost you and the equivalent of ten pell. In the thousands column. Oh. Okay. I mean, that's a big chunk of change. You mean 10,000 pell? I don't have that kind of coin. Converting to gill, that comes around to a million or so. Mayhap if we all pitch in. No, no. This is my feat to accomplish. I feel guilty of having others pay the cost. I'll find the money. Somehow. Well, he likes what he just heard. In that case... The basket of wool is war worth the sum you paid me earlier. One pell in the hundreds column. Beginning with the wool, you can trade for even more valuable goods until you have something suitable to bargain with for the saddle. That's a nice gesture, but you think I could turn a hundred pell into a million? That's ten thousand times more. Y yeah, okay. Ah, uh, he wants to see if you can turn basically a dollar into a hundred dollars. Seeing if you're good at bartering. We need ten thousand pell, not a million, so we're looking at a hundred times more. Oh, right. I think I got it confused with Alpha Node's million gill. I'm not sure about this trading idea. You're almost talked into buying a cloak you didn't need mere moments after you arrived. But I just hate when you're right. Then let me help you with your deal making. Uh, hello again. Uh... My, my blue, my blue, my, my blue, my blue, my blue, my blue. I work here as a ranch hand, but I've also learned a lot about the peddler profession. It's all right if I aid them now, yes. I guided the claimants toward the first step of the feat, like you asked. As long as Waklamuk goes alone to capture her alpaca, she is free to accept assistance from whoever she likes. Hooray! Let's let's see about getting you that saddle, Third Promise. I don't know why you made your offer, but I could use an ally with a beak for bargains. Welcome aboard, my blue. For the rest of us stay behind, perhaps? It may be easier to haggle over prices without so many voices chiming in. Probably for the best. Yes, stay here and pitch in with the ranch work. When Mabalu gone, I'll need extra hands to tempt to the alpacas. Gladly. Although, Bader, I think you should go with Walk Lamont. You've seen markets and bazaars the world over and surely have sage advice to share. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I'm bad with my money in this game. Well, eh, sometimes. In that case, you should also hold onto the apaca wool. If it's misplaced or soiled in some way, you'll have nothing to bargain with. As if I do such a thing, but I'll leave the wool baiter anyways. The better to keep my hands free. Alright. To begin, I suggest we try trading the wool to Havli, the saddler. He won't agree to the deal, of course, but he'll give us an idea how much he'll accept for his wares. Ooh, the sun's coming up. I just... Nice. Also, a feeling I got... Aaron Vell clearly is a more important character than we he lets on because of what the Don servant said to him. I got a feeling later on he is going to become an actual party member. He is going to have gear and a weapon. I got a feeling there's more to him than meets the eye. Just saying, it's something I because while well, the Don servant knew who he was, and so he was in the palace before, so clearly there is more to meets the eye with him. 
Turning 100 pell of wool into 1,000, 10,000 pell saddle isn't exactly the kind of suggestion I expect from the head merchant of a clan. I'd worry if it was just walk them up. It sounds like Mabalu knows a thing or two about trading. I have every confidence you'll come back with the saddle. Oh, thank you, Kryl. Hang to alpacas, are we? I have some experience for that when I was younger. Yeah, basically, he is seeing... Mabalu hasn't given up by sea. He's seeing if the future ruler is good with commerce, bartering, and all that. He wants to see if they know the value of money and if they can make money with just the smallest exchanges. Simple bartering, trading. He, I, yeah, that's what I believe is happening. Mabalu. This is the artisan who makes taming saddles and walk them up. Is it really possible to make a hundred times what the wolves just worth through trading? Yes. Because everyone has a value, you gotta find an item, you give them the item, and they'll have more value than what it's worth to give you something even more. We're gonna come back with something even better in value than that. Hey, Havali. He's trying to teach us commerce and the importance of money. And bartering. And more about their people. Something I could do for you. We've come to bargain. I need one of your special taming saddles to catch a wild alpaca. A saddle, is it? And how will you be paying for it? With this basket of fine alpaca wool. Here you go. Oh, he does not look pleased. What use does a saddle maker have for wool? Besides, this would barely cover the cost of a single trap bu strap buckle. Offer me something I actually want. And that... That is it. And what might that be? Mezgal. I like to nurse a cup at a day's end while I inspect my finished work. Bring me a jug of quality stuff and you got yourself a deal. That bodes well for us, Third Promise. Such Mezgal can be fine had for only five pell in the thousands column why do you talk like that just say it's five thousand pell hold on hold on did you say third promise the mouth first change the saddle is going to cost you a jug of premium mezcal age three years at least three years that stuff is valued ten thousand pell or more why have you doubled the price because I must support the man of ambition who will see my business prosper. Zor Zorilja will go to war, and his cavalry will need saddles. Lots of saddles. It's not impersonal, Third Promise, but I won't sell you my craft for anything less than my asking price. Oh, so you just immediately change your price after telling us the price. Fair. So fair. But thus is bartering. You gotta be careful of your words, because that ruined it. Can't say I blame him. I'm known for championing peace, and peace is unlikely to bring him more customers. Yeah, we talked to him earlier, and he's like, Ah, you're not gonna be a fan of him. I don't want to talk to you. Those of our grandparents' generation remember the dark days when the clans were at war. Many of these Palu pray for your victory, Walk Lamont. The younger ones, though, to them, strife and bloodshed are as children's stories. They think themselves safe from those horrors and take the peace we now enjoy for granted. Still, others are unsatisfied with this quiet prosperity and crave the future that Second Promise envisions. They've become obsessed with innovations like the dirigibles and that have made trades swift and easy. Then you have those like Havli, convinced that the First Promise's plans for conquest will afford them opportunities for great profit. But what about you, Mabalu? Aren't you of the younger generation? At least a year or two younger than me, I'd say. Oh, I was raised on the old tales. I memorized the accounts of what it was like when the Yakui ruled the village. That's why I offer to help. I want you to become the Dawn Serp to keep our nation from going back to the way it was. Well, 
then I guess I'd better make sure to win the contest. But the type of mess gold the saddler wants is is so very expensive. Aren't we? Weren't we uh, expecting to need 10,000 pel from the outset? Nothing's changed. We just need to get on and go. Oh, go with it. I may not have a head for trade or a stomach for alpacas, but I won't give up with a piece of turlial on the line. Then neither will I. We'll make you the dawn servant. Aiming for that 10,000 pel jug right away will only bring us failure and frustration. So let's try exchanging the wool for anything even a touch more valuable. The trick is to find someone who needs the Apalka wool and is willing to trade it at a loss to acquire it. Someone who supports your bid to the throne, for instance. Ah! Wait, he already bought a bunch of wool already. We're gonna make him bankrupt? <laughs> of course, the Weaver! Bullock was his name, I believe. He went on his way and said he agreed my vision, and he was here to buy wool. He already did that. He got drunk, too. I think I remember the direction he was going, but for now, let's head back to that road where we first met him. Yeah, because he mentioned he bought, like, three times the wool, but he got a deal, and he also had some really good spirits. All right, it's time. I need to listen to my battle theme. Yeah! I want to play Final Fantasy IX right now. I can't wait to see us fly. Oh, I want to get out of here and just to fly and see what it looks like transformed. Oh, I'll wait until I'm done with this quest. All right, I'm sorry. I'm very curious. I'm going to just go South Shroud. I will be back in two seconds, everybody. I need to know what this looks like transformed. Is it the arc I know? I must know this. Oh, yeah. And that's the rail gun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's the bard quest. Yeah. Oh, the Final Fantasy IX battle theme is literally the best battle theme. All right, now if we untransform, where do I come out of? Let's see. Oh, I actually... Do I become it? I wasn't paying attention. Oh yeah, I'm not there. Oh, I love it so much. Okay, let's go back. I might as well just use a ticket. Oh, I love the battle theme from Final Fantasy IX. The music in IX is literally 10 out of 10 for me. The story is a 10 out of 10. The characters are 10 out of 10. The graphics, the art style, the environments. Oh, so there's a peacock. Oh, man, it looks so cool. All right, I'm here. Well, I'm gonna drop you now. My blue boop. Is this where you met the weaver? Buckle up. This is the spot. After Bolnock talked to us, he walked off to the south. Then he's probably going to... Ik... Ikuvlo... Ikuvlo's Inn. Most of the vi uh, visitors of Wakapello end up staying there. Let's go check it out, shall we? All right. And I'm, guess what? I'm gonna walk there because new area, new expansion, new me. Put this way, I don't need it right now. I lied. If you're wondering why I'm not doing certain things, I don't think I need a real, you know, hit me. I wanna see what you do. That. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I do have some really decent armor. Probably not the best for the last expansion, but it's the good stuff. 
best ones tombstones could buy. That's all I can say. I take it this means in. Iku, Iku blows in. Iku blows in. Oh, whoops. Oh, well, nah. Oh, no. Man, run. Trust me. You don't want to do it. I'm going to meet again, but wait. Aren't you on your way to Waka... Wakun... Wak... Wachun? Wakun Pelo. Wakun Pelo. I'm hoping he's willing to offer us something wonderful in exchange. Alright, let's do this. That poor guy doesn't know what's about to happen. Can I have that basket, Peter? Ah, alpaca wool. A basket of standard quality wool you received from Tobley. Worth one Pell and the hundreds column. Yeah. I wish we'd use normal money. In the hundreds column. Thanks. Now let's see if it could turn a profit. I mean, technically, it is a profit for us to even have that wool. Well, Bullnock, I'm glad we found you. Are you interested in making a trade? Sorry, I was taking a sip of my coffee. <clears throat> Sir, I promise you, you wish to do business with me? May I ask what this is all about? Oh. Well, people doing fireworks outside you see some where i live people do fireworks on the third and then also on the fourth some fireworks started tonight i see so the goal is to turn that basket of wool into a jug of three-year-old premium mezcal i swear god if you give me the jug immediately then allow me to invest in your efforts oh okay peace and troll is what allows me to cross freely the lands of my yeah i actually yeah make yeah that's a good point i didn't think about that no war means peace peace means safer roads means which means suppliers merchants uh, travelers can go different cities and stuff and actually trades and yeah no th that guy's not really thinking well is he Th he's just thinking oh i'm gonna sell a bunch of saddles to him and all that but then trade's gonna die down because i don't be afraid to travel and people be die yeah war might not be a good idea guys just saying naturally i would prefer that one pledge to preserve preserve that peace win the throne thus do i humbly offer you this wool poncho small token i pray contributes to your victory she has such a funny face. Oh, that's a fun. Oh, that's fine. Craftsmanship. A garnet like that would easily fetch five Pell in the hundreds column. Thank you. That's very generous, Bullnock. Thank you. I promise I won't let you down. So, we just made 400 Pell in the hundreds, thousand, hundreds column profit. I have every faith in you, Third Promise. May fortune bless your future dealings. All right, we just traded something, and now we got something worth more. I can't believe you quadrupled your investment with the first deal. We're off to a spectacular start. Only because Beta remembered her weaver friend, all I did was hand over the wool. That's not true. The connections you build with the people are vital, and that's also another reason why your father did this. He wants you to build connections with the people while you're on your adventure to make connections with them, to see everything that they do, to know about their relations, know about their religion, how they live, so you all can live in peace and unity. And that's how your father probably, that happened, because he traveled with an adventure friend. And that's probably exactly what happened and why he wants everyone else to do this. I probably said this last episode too. Uh, this is one of the most fundamental uh, precepts of trading one of which you have instinctively mastered you, you think so i know so now let's take our 500 pel poncho and trade it for something even more valuable hey but here Bader, you take the poncho if i somehow lost it aaronville would never let me hear the end of it i don't know who we're giving that poncho to i don't think we've met anyone else really since we got here all set our next deal will be waiting is waiting to be found. All right, let's do this. Excellent three. Oh. 
Oh, why that's... I didn't expect that. Success, you trade a 100 pill basket of Packable for 500 pill wool poncho. All right, I was really confused. I'm like, wait, did I just do the quest? All right. We turned a 500... We turned a 100 pill into 500. I know it's only five times more, but feels like 500 times more. And no, no, trust me. No, let's not do that math. We're not doing Steiner math. <laughs> Leveraging connections is a sound strategy, but we also could, uh, but we should also consider supply and demand. An individual in urgent need of a good poncho will offer more than a merchant simply looking to stock his shelves. That makes sense, but how do we know if someone needs a poncho? I don't know, they say they need a poncho. Uh, they aren't wearing one. That's my guess. That's the obvious answer, isn't it? We look for a person without a poncho and hope they're eager to buy ours. Yes, there you go. We find the demand for our supply. So, where should we begin our search for prospect uh, prospective buyers? There are, there are a number of places, but we could do worse than starting right here at the inn. There might be interested travelers. Meanwhile, while we do this, her brother is hunting alpaca. Hmm, who here needs a poncho? A la Mamulja hardly wear anything to begin with here. Those are probably lands guard or cell swords. Mamulja, who soldier for a living, prefer not to wear much above their waist. It hampen, hampers their movements. Yeah, that makes sense, honestly. So even if they have bared soldiers, Mamulja carrying arms can be struck off the list. Okay. He's carrying something. No. You? Let's see. No coat or cloak, but also has no weapons. Oh, we might have a winner. Hey, we just singled you out. Oh there, my friend. You're not mercenary by trade, right? I was curious about your bold choice of dress or lack, therefore. Oh. It was no choice of mine, believe me. I was attacked by beasts on the way here, barely escaping my scales intact. My coat was not so lucky. I'm actually a toolmaker from Tuliel, and was dressed quite smartly. All the bears show the pelu. I am a man who takes pride in his appearance, and therefore his work as well. But now look at me. Well, sir, this is your lucky day. I have a poncho. Give me money. With a splendid poncho. This would be perfect replacement for my coat I lost. I actually cannot have that poncho. I would actually like to wear it. We'd be willing to part with it. If you if you'd like to make a trade for one of your fine tools, perhaps. What about this hatchet? Crafted myself and will vouch for its quality. Oh, I might not be the level to equip that hatchet, Maya. Uh yeah. Uh, my gathering isn't leveled up that much. The blade looks sharp and half well made. I'd value it one pell in the thousands column. Hey, we're making money. We just doubled it. Oh, from 500 to 1,000. We have a deal. Wonderful. How about you don't say the price of the garment to his face? Mm, usually when you buy stuff at the store, and you buy, I don't know, a banana for $2 even. And then uh, as you're checking out, the store clerk's like, aha, ah, that banana. I bought that for 50 cents. It's like, oh, why am I buying this for $2 then? Wonderful. Fine garment such as this should put me on even footing with a, any Pelu merchant. I mean, he's probably happy, but still, you do not say the price you got for it in front of the customer. Like the impetuous owner of the Miplu's Mip, Mip, mate garden, Miplu's mate garden for one, her field hands use hatchets to harvest the mate, and I thought to impress her with the tool I sold you. No matter, I have other ways to sell. Glad I am to have met you. Did you hear that? We already found our next buyer, the Miplu's mate garden. We go. Yes, but it's a fair distance off boat. We should take the alpacas. And immediately not happy. 
these ones will be the calm type, right? I don't know. Excellent trade! Oh, that's a decent looking hatchet. Success, you trade a 500 pell wool poncho for a thousand pell hatchet. Oh, wow. Oh, I hear those fireworks now. You got the ones that go... That's my sound effect for that. Oh, look at that sword. That is very cool. Hello. Here we go again. Riding alpacas. My blue. Well done recognizing that toolmaker as a potential customer. If you've a mind to change professions, you make an excellent merchant. Thank you. Complete. All right, one second. Um, what class was I given the armor again? Not you. Was it Bard? Bard. Hey, Bard, I got you some gloves. There we go. Oh. Yep, we're good there. All right, and back to Gunbreaker. All right. Mabalu's dream. Wakalamut steals herself for the ride to find your next trading partner. So, uh, yeah, this... Okay, I'm gonna... I'm not stopping or anything. I want to say something. This cr expansion right now is starting slow, but I like the build. You're meeting the people, seeing how they live. You're seeing the places slowly as you go. You're getting feel for the land, the people, and everything. Which means... When shit goes down, it's going down hard. Not as bad as Endwalker, where literally everyone's dying around you, which happened in Endwalker. A lot of people died. Doesn't really look like it, but the world basically ended, kind of. We barely saved it. But I like the slow build and the storytelling right now. Also, a major plus is I like her, Walk Lamont, way more... Uh, so, real quick, in uh, the third expansion, no, second expansion, I went Heaven's Ward, and then... Oh, uh, no, I can't remember. It was... Oh, no. Stormblood. Stormblood. In Stormblood, you had Lease. She was absolutely annoying, and I absolutely hated everything about her. Walk Lamont, I like, it is not annoying me. So that's an improvement. I like her as a character. Lise was annoying, and I'm glad we barely talked to her. Personally, did not care for her at all. She was annoying. But yeah, that is a thing like expansions ago. All right, before we get, uh, yeah, that's a shame too. I think I like Stormblood. Like I liked Hien, Gotsetsu, and a few other things that happened near the end of that expansion were really good. Just Lise was the Personally, the worst part for me. All right, before we get moving, you should be the one to hold on to this. Listen, if my gatherers were upgraded, I would totally use that hatchet, but they're not. With that, I suppose we should hop on the alpacas. Mablu has been so kindly provided. Are you sure? If I'm gonna, if I'm going to catch a wild alpaca after this, I can't be shying away from the tame ones. Not that I'm scared of them, you understand or their nasty, disgusting, foul-smelling spit. All right, real quick, I must read it. A fine hatchet. A finely crafted hatchet you received in the trade for a wool poncho worth one pe one pell in the thousands column. Yeah, so if I was better, I'd totally use that. If I was a better botanist. I gotta work on all of these, I know. I just don't care for it. I'm, uh casual anyways if you're wondering how i got all those crafting levels um now bringers uh Ishgard had a crafting thing to fix the city you can easily grind that and level all those up ready to go let's mount up let's ride the packa oh sweet i have to do a thing yet. and it's off the mates field we go mate fields we go please don't spit please don't spit all right, you'll be fine. These ones are custom to people. I still don't trust them. You have a knack for riding, no matter what you say. 
Without our alpaca friends, we Pelu would never have become traveling merchants. Can you imagine walking all the way across Turl? I swear that mountain is too tall to be real. That is a big mountain. Warcars Damor. What's that name? A forbidden site, isn't it? Or boating site. Oh, I've never appreciated up. I never appreciate up close. You have to take the long way around the cliffs to get there. To the highlands belong to Yokuai. Yokuai. So, Mablu, you said you're learning about Peller profession. You don't care for ranch work? No, no, I love it. I love working with alpacas. I'm not going to move my mouse, by the way. But becoming a peddler has always been a dream of mine. It's just, I'm not sure I have a talent for it. If I can help you buy the taming saddle, though, then I have proof that I can do this after all. In that case, you best get ready to be a merchant. Look, we're almost there, are we? Oh, okay. Oh no, it's another Cactar. A Noto Cactar. Great, wonder if that's gonna instantly kill me. Man, Blue Mage, when that finally gets up and level, will be learning something probably from you. I don't touch Blue Mage. I was excited for it when it first came out. Yeah, I get level 50 and I'm like, I'm done. I barely learned any spells. We made it, and without a single smelly incident. I am pooped myself this time, I swear. I sent the alpacas back to Ikuvlo's Inn. I, if you're wondering why I slow down sometimes, I pronounce things like that. So we'll walk uh, along the main road when we return to the village. Speaking of roads to travel, you were adapted, adopted by the Dawn Servant, weren't you, Third Promise? Yes, that I was. Which makes sense because, my god, you do not look similar like your father. Same with the Mitok. The, uh, god, the Mitok who went to Eorzea to learn uh, the te te technologies and then brought back here. Then, perhaps you understand, I was an orphan too, you see. Tobley took me in. He took in all the ranch hands, actually. All of them? Yes, and everyone works hard at their chores, grateful for the opportunity to repay the head ledger's generosity. Yeah, here I am, the only one who wanted to go off and be a merchant. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm telling you this. We need to keep trading things for your saddle. If you're prepared for the feet, if you're prepared for the feet of gold. As it's mate's harvesting season, they can't have too many quality hatchets. Add that add to the Waklamut's way with the people, and we should have no trouble making a favorable deal. That's Mipalu herself over there. Pass the hatchet to the third promise and let's get bargaining. Uh so that's her thing. As much as she wants to do the alpaca farming, the pay back him for his generosity, she wants to branch out and become a merchant. Which honestly, I think Tobley would be very proud of her if she did that. Which I think we're gonna learn in the future that he actually does want her to become a merchant because you think he really wants them to stay there. I don't think he's that much of a jerk. Ma Blue. Did you give that hatchet back to Waklaba? We should let her do the talking. I don't trust her doing the talking. Fine. You have that little axe for me. Well, it depends. I have this axe. Then I have uh, this axe. You want that one? Give her that one instead. They'd be so confused. Thanks. Now let's see what we can get for it. Here you go, Mipaloo. You're Mipaloo, the owner of these fields. I have a mind to trade, if you're interested. Well, well, the third promise. I might be convinced to entertain a proposal, but do you have an offer? This hatchet, forged by Cecil and Artisan, the razor edge of this ex exceptional tool might make light work of your crops. Hmm, the quality is acceptable, I suppose. I offer you a large sack of mate leaves in exchange. A sack of mate leaves is a value of one pelt and thousands column, the same price as the hatchet. The deal will be 
bring us no closer to the mes mezcal. If I may, Mr. Sniblu, it's harv harvesting season, is it not? Does not the demand for the hatchets afford them a higher value? It is indeed the season, which is why I procure an ample batch of tools well in advance. Ooh, we're a bit late. We've missed the window for demand. In that case, we'll have to fall back on connections. Think of it this way. Generous deal here will put... You and the third promises good grace. Surely that's worthy of your consideration. I do not wish to give offense, but I must tell you that I stand with the second promise. His innovations will improve every aspect of our lives. I believe, including farming. And I will no longer have need of hatchets. So, the first promise, warmonger, no. Second promise, the technology, Matoke. So far, I've seen nothing about him I hate. And then you have the third promise, who, at the moment, pretty cool. Then you have the guy who I'm pretty sure is going to be the antagonist. But yeah, the second promise so far, I don't know much about except how much he loves technology and loves, you know, bringing this land up to a technological technological age of Eorzea. But I don't know much beyond that, and we're probably going to learn a little more about him. But so far, I don't hate him. I assure you that I have nothing but respect for Waklomot. That is why I'm prepared to purchase a spare hatchet at a fair price. I, I suppose it is fair given your reasons, but we ourselves would be no better off w for the transaction. How about this then? If we were to help bring you in your harvest, would you give us a better deal? As a matter of fact, I would. Until Kona, Kona's reforms... Kona's reforms come about, I can always use more hands in the fields. Then you can go ahead and add our labor to the bargain. Add a value to tip the scales. How could I have forgotten about one of the most basic rules of trading? You can rest here if you like, Mablu. Bader and I have meat to gather. Okay, so we're finding when they were saying meat fields, I was really confused. Like, what's meat? Are they mating? Where are the fields? It's a leaf, okay. Oh no, I'm helping too. Off to the fields then, and mind you to pick the healthy leaves. It'll take a, take five good bundles from each of you. Yes, let's go find some mate in the fields. I'm mating in the fields. I'm mating in the fields. Holy cow, the Pekka can bring that? Oh, I see why now. It's not heavy. Helium balloons. Okay. I was about to say, wow, that looks big. No, 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 no. Hello, Mabalu. How you doing? Did you see how Waklamuk came to my rescue there? She's really good with the people, which I believe will, in the end, decide her victory. For being in touch with the people is very important for being a good leader, especially one who vows for peace. All right. I find it funny that I absolutely hate Lise. I like her though. Waklama. I wasn't sure if Miplu would buy it, but it goes to show that you never know until you try. Through that. All right, let's gather some of these le mate leaves. Definitely not what I was thinking the mate fields were. <laughs> Just don't ask me what I actually thought the mate fields were. I'm like, oh god, I don't know how to do that. Oops. Did not mean to do that. Alright, I got my mate. How about you girls? Also, I'm curious, what's the description of mate? A sizable pile of freshly harvested mate leaves. Oh, okay, it's not much, really. Also, clear skies, no, fair skies. Bam, helium balloons on the side, and then it pulls. Yeah, not bad. Also, level 89 ninja armor. You've bought me some leaves, then. Brought me some leaves. Bought, brought, whatever. Here you go. You got five leaves, the healthy ones, too. 
As ex an acceptable harvest, we'll see how your companions f fared before I make my any decision, though. Here's nine million pill. Doubt it. Here, we brought our share as well. Let's see, how much did they say? It was the same as the hatchet. We each pick five. So... Yeah, I think he's going to bring up our value a little bit. Thank you, Third Promise. This is more than enough to hold up your end of the bargain. Now it's time to honor mine. After adding the value of your labor, labor to the price of the hatchet, I am prepared to offer you a full sack of our highest grade mate leaves. I don't know the price of that. Can you tell me? Premium mate. Bought at the shop. One sack of those leaves would cost no more than five pell in the thousands column. Profit! Then we can bid farewell to this hatchet. I'll give it a good home. Talk of the contest aside, I'm glad we could come to a mutually agreeable trade. As am I. All the best with the rest of your harvest. In this episode, I harvest mate and trade. Yeah, I'm gonna trade so good. Oh, she's sad. Oh no, Mavali, what's wrong? She's sad that she didn't think of uh, improving the trade with help or anything. Oof. Coffee went down the wrong tube. I need to stop doing that. It's as I was saying before. Even after everything Tobley has done for me, I'm planning to abandon it all and become a merchant, which he won't be upset about. He's happier branching out. He doesn't want you to stay somewhere you're not happy. But then I needed your help after forgetting all the basics rule of trade. How can I expect Toby to accept my decision? That decision then. Hmm. Have you mentioned your plans to leave? That is quite important to do. Not exactly. I wanted to prove I could succeed as a peddler before I declared my intentions. I seek to follow in my father's footsteps, but not because he accepts expects of me. I want to preserve truly true. Puriel's peace and becoming Dawn Servant happens to be the best way to do it. You should live a life of your own choosing, and I wouldn't be surprised if Tobley held the same opinion. So talk to him. You're right. It's better to find out for sure than worry over what he might say. Thank you for your advice. Teeth. But first, we have a sale to buy. I want that success under my belt so I can be sh sure of my decision. And now during all these trades, she'll grow as a person. What next then? We shall trade our tea leaves for something halfway to 10,000 pell? Hey, easy, you're jumping a little too much, who knows? No, I think we're close enough by now. I say we go straight for the premium. Oh, we're going straight for it, eh? Okay. Bargain our way into double the value, eh? Think you can do that? Trust me, I'll make this trade work. I admire you, Third Promise. That you're holding your own against such strong competition for the throne is inspiring. Uh, am I really holding my own against Zona and Soralja? I mean... Of course I am. I'm Wak Luma of the Dawn's Promise, after all. Mm hmm. Yay! We got top grade meat leaves. Success! You trade a thousand pell hatchet for five thousand pell sack of top grade meat leaves. So they say mate leaves are tea leaves. I'm curious how good that tea would be. 
I love tea, I really do. Also, I think it's time to turn the music up a bit more. Sorry if it's quiet, I'm just trying to get the sound. I really am, I am trying. Ah, Blue? I've never been one to take it slow. Once I have a gold mine, it's full speed ahead. That's who I am. Good for you. All right, Wakulmont. A premium deal. Wakulmont has her eye on a jug of premium mezcal. I could be saying that wrong, but oh well. Before we go, let me give you the mate leaves. I don't need risking Aaronville's point. You keep giving me stuff, afraid to lose it. I swear to God, if you have the jug on you and you dump it, Oh boy. Right then, our next stop is the Mezcal Distant, Distant, Distillery. Holy cow. I thought say Distantry for some reason. Oh, and side quests have popped up here. Anything important? No. I would love to do these, but... Oh, wait, I can go here. <gasps> wait, it has 14 minutes remaining and it has an XP boost. Okay, uh, we're doing that. Sorry, but there's an XP boosted uh, quest uh, fate up there. And I might as well hop into that one. Give me a second. Let me uh, use this. Uh, hey, buddy. Okay, let's go. I move so slow. Give me a second. Ah, oh, there. All right, let's see if I can do this. I should have set my chocobo to be a healer. Oh well, a bit late now. This is a bit rusty. And there. That's right, look at me. Don't look at the dragoon who is currently beating you up. I'm a bit sloppy right now, but I haven't really done much combat today. Awesome buddies! Oh, more people are coming. Perfect. Over here, follow me. Don't look at them. I don't care what damage I take. Do not damage them. You. All right. That was a mess. And... All right. All right, I helped them out. All right, and I got a few uh, gems for that. 614. Oh, wait, no, that's the full light guy. I think it's 614 for that. Jeez. Alright. Mablu. Bak. 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 Baklama, I'm here. Oh, the smell of mezcal is overpowering. The fumes alone are making me dizzy. I can only imagine what it tastes like. I'm a very picky person with alcohol. It has to not taste like alcohol. I hate the taste of alcohol. We want to speak with a man uh, by the name of Gobli, even among his fellow distillers. He's regarded as the master crafts, master of the craft. He knows the value of his products, so if we're to convince him to trade for twice what the leaves are worth, we're going to need, a tar tar need targeted information. That means asking around and taking in the gossip. Wait, we're going to blackmail him? 
If you could talk to the people here at the distillery, Bader, perhaps Wakluma could do the same at the village entrance. Meanwhile, I'll head to the north side and see what I can learn. Okay. Bye. Alright. Bibelja. Bibelja. Me, I'm the chef from Turiel. I often come here to buy gold goblies mezca. Mezgal. The finest in Turiel. According to my customers. It always brings out a jug during our dealings, but I can't handle the stuff too well myself. I take small sips, not wanting to be impolite, you understand, but still end up so addled that I agree with whatever price he quotes me. It would be nice to have less uh, potent refresh refreshments during such conversations, else I might take this is a seriously or reconsider our arrangement. Ah, so they get you drunk on purpose. Which makes sense, because we heard that earlier. Sabuli? Gobli might be deft hand at distilling, but he's got no sense when it comes to appearances. Rumor has it he's been invited to the palace for business negotiations. If he presents himself to the court wearing his usual rumpled attire, though, he'll be laughed out of the sun perch. Though so he doesn't dress for success. Rap blue. Rap blue. There's not much to say, uh, not much I can say about Gobli, but I can tell you what Gobli's been saying. The other day, he was muttering about monsters prowling around Agave Jaws. That's the field where they gather ingredients for Mezca. Their presence has made it harder to produce said ingredients and thus driven up the price of his product. A boon, some might argue. But it's hard to celebrate when it affects the work as it does. Can't rightfully bring joy to people if you can't keep making the things they love. Ah, uh, so we're, we're gonna give him the leaves, and then we're gonna go there and take out the monsters that are harassing his fields. Okay. Abalu? So, what did you find out? His fields are in trouble, and he doesn't dress for success. Oh. Well, we can make use of all those tidbits. The deal is as good as sealed. As for me, I found out where Gobli is working. There's a millstone at the top of the slope behind the distillery. You go on ahead. I'll bring Wakluma. Okay. Hmm. I'm actually curious. What does your gun blade at level 90 look like? I am curious. I mean, I don't need it. As you can see, I have a better gun blade. Oh, it looks plain. Not bad, but plain. What's the Dark Knight sword look like? Eh. I mean, it's the first merchant I've ran across that sells equipment. I extremely doubt anything really good looking. Man, I've been going for almost an hour and 20 and all I've been doing is talking. And again, Final Fantasy XIV is more story driven. It is a Final Fantasy game with multiplayer. Gobly, how you been? Got yeah, business with me, sir. Why don't we talk down below as not to distract the pack at work? Ah. Get you my face. I need a shave. My facial hair is getting too long and I hate it. Alright. I think I know where this is going. We're going to have to go clear out your fields on top of giving you these leaves. Now, what's this about? Keep it brief if you mind. I'm a... If you would, I'm a busy man. We're in the market for a three-year-old jug of premium mezca. Mezcal. Assuming you have any on hand, that is. Ah, an excellent choice. I must warn you, though. It doesn't come so cheap. We don't have the Pell, but we can offer you a sack of mate leaves in exchange. It's top-grade stuff, like the mezcal. No deal. Mate leaves are well and good, but I don't have any use for them. Wait for it. You got this. No deal, just like that. Still, I hate to send you away empty-handed. Why don't we sit and chat a while over a cup of mezcal? Now the real bargaining begins. Which of our cards do you want to play first? The monsters in the agave fields. Let's hold on to that one. We need to consider our timing. Oh. I guess we're doing this. 
The Hubingo Chief's distaste for strong drink. I guess we're, uh, okay, taking it nice and slow. My bad, I thought we are jumping right into it. I appreciate your hospitality, but I'm afraid I can't hold my drink. I've heard one of your regular customers, a Hubigo, a Hubigo chef, is the same. Seeing as not everyone can enjoy mezcal, I wonder if you might benefit from having other refreshments to offer. Something like mate tea, for instance, and brewed from the finest leaves, of course. Ah, you're right. Absolutely right. I had noticed a growing reluctance on the part of the Humbingo friend, but I did not realize I was myself to blame. I must endeavor to, endeavor to be a better host. Still, even with that added value in mind, no sack of leaves is worth the mess cool you're after. Should we offer to call the monsters causing them trouble? Not yet. Keep that card up our sleeve until we need it. As I expect, you're aware the rise succession is currently taking place. That's why the third promise is graced us with her presence. When the contest is decided, the subsequent ascension ceremony and banquet will be a prestigious affair. If your mescal were to be served there, it would bring your distillery immeasurable fame. Wait. Could it be your rumored invitation to the palace is to discuss that very possibility? As a matter of fact, yes, I must admit. I'm still rearing from the abrupt abruptness of it all. It will be a great honor and opportunity, if I could secure the deal. Well, I should think your exceptional mescals would speak for itself. That said, there is no such thing as being too prepared and first impressions last. You'll want to be wearing your very best when you walk into Volok Shunsa. It would be a shame to miss a chance of a lifetime simply for want of proper garments. I mean, I don't think anything's wrong with his garments. <laughs> that it will be. Uh, that it would. Are you saying you have garments to offer? Something ideal for court? We have no garments in hand, Frey, but we can provide you with the next best thing, an introduction to a weaver. His name is Bolnok, and his works are highly regarded in Trulio. Oh, she is on fire. As a supporter of Wakulmont and keen observer of palace policies, he will doubtless be happy to guide you in the selection of an outfit to fit this golden occasion. This is certainly a tempting proposal, and one of which I may take full advantage, but the scales are... Scales still aren't quite balancing. Now, monsters. So, weren't there mo Say, weren't there monsters running amok in the Agave Jaws? That's a problem we could easily solve for you. Surely, I'd be most grateful for your immediate assistance. I was resigned to hiring cell swords to clear them out. Factoring in that saved expense and introduction to a trusted weaver, this is shaping up to be a sound bargain. All right, you got a deal. You have a deal. Yes, I knew you'd come around. Give us a moment and Bayer and, Bayer and I will take care of those prowling nuisances. In the meantime, I'll use the time to pen an introductory layer to Bullnock. The fields you're looking for are just north of Waku... Waku... Pelo, Waku Pelo, be safe. Every time that word pops up, every time. That's most of the places in this game at the moment. The original game, I can pronounce most of them. Then you have uh, this expansion, which no. All right, back to Final Fantasy IX. Okay, I'm going. Ah, oh, the agave jaws are there. All right, and close that. Man, it looks cool. Oh, wait, what? Oh, I'm looking at that. Ah. All right, I was very curious what this was. I thought it was a sight, but I don't think it is. All right, I'm here. That should be Agave Jaws just over there. This will go faster if we split up. Come and find me once you're done clearing out your share pests. Will do. 
I am a gunbreaker. I shoot things with my sword. Solvi. Oh, Solvi. No, it's Solvi. Solvi. Ah, Traveler, welcome to the Gave Joss, friend. How can I be of service? What do you do here? Oh, many things. I examine the soil and weather to ensure our agave grows in the best conditions possible. Decided the pace at which they are cultivated and determine how many are prepared for distillation. Distillation. The distill it, 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 it. Nothing pleases me more than when someone takes an interest in our farm. In the farm, my colleagues and I spend all day looking after the agave. I suppose it feels nice when our hard work is appreciated. What kind of place is this? Why, it's an agave farm, of course. We collect their sap and distill it to make mezcal. As for the farm's namesake, well, just look how neatly we have the plants lined up. Doesn't it remind you of a wild beast gaping maw? Er, no, not that I've seen one up close. Well, that's actually a really interesting conversation. All right. Oh. The agave are looking like a pine cone things or yeah pine cone oh wait 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 hey uh buddy um uh probably uh just uh oh you're free you can just go in the... yeah yeah go in the attack stance buddy and then let's change your appearance let's see what do we want um Barding of Eternal Darkness, maybe? Let's see what it looks like on you, shall we? There we go. The Barding of Eternal Darkness. It's actually not bad, but you know what? We're going classic Final Fantasy, everybody. We're going to just put a nice, simple Black Mage. No. Red Mage. There we go. That's my chocobo. Okay, now we're doing it. I'll keep my tank stance on. Alright, he's dead. Quick play, choco, we must go. If you're wondering why he's called Choco, play Final Fantasy V. I had no Chocobo name when I got my Chocobo. I'm like, oh, I'm thinking Choco. Alright. Our last destination. Yeah, the Red Mage Barding looks nice on you. I'll keep that on for now. Alright. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Nice knowing you. Alright. Good old Choco Beak. But yeah, my Chocobo is, if you're wondering, he is a rank 10. Good old boy he is. Uh, his skills are a little bit in attack. I never really got the these, sadly. But he is up to Chocobeak. Healer is what I use the most for him. And then Defender when I'm not playing, you know, the tank. Choco Kick, Enhanced Accuracy. Oh, look at her, Walk them up, Kill 2. Compared to the creatures I hunted with Papa, this is no challenge at all. Come on, let's head back to the distillery. Aunt's left is giving my blue the sack of leaves so she can steal the, seal the deal. I was about to say steal the deal. I'm reading faster than my bloody eyes. A Chabageddon. Chabageddon. Chaba. Chaba, Chaba, Chaba. Uh, Choco, how you doing? I haven't summoned you in forever. Uh, oh, well, my friend is playing Skyrim. Good choice. I need to play Skyrim. I have to do my session for Saturday, Sunday. And with it being a holiday weekend, at least I should have time. And then Elden Ring and this are going to be taking that off. Oh, I'm getting far in Elden Ring. I'm kicking butt. 
I have yet to get the DLC. If you're wondering when this releases, uh, at the moment I am up to Ronnie's quest is ready. I just gotta go through like a rot and I'm doing everything in my power not to do that. I think I'm gonna go up the Atlas elevator and finally go to the Atlas plateau now. All right. Well, my, how you doing? Go on, give Mabalu the sack of leaves so she can seal the deal. Mabalu, I got a present for you. This monster's a little trouble for you, it seems. Now, if I could just have the sack of leaves. Top grade mate leaves. A large sack of premium mate leaves you received and trade for a fine hatchet and investment of labor. Worth five pell in the thousands column. Here you go. Thank you for looking after our precious trading goods. Now, I'm worried you're going to give her the jug and she's going to ruin it. Your monster problem has been resolved, Master Gobley. Here are the fine mate leaves and a written introduction to Bullknock as agreed. Three things for one. Then the deal is done. Here, your jug of premium mascal, aged three years. Please accept it with my compliments. Don't drop it, 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 please. Yes, we finally have the mascal. Great work, especially you, Mob Blue. You're the one who inspired me to come this far, third promise. But let's not celebrate until we have the saddle in hand. Mabalu, is it? You driven? You drive a hard bargain, young peddler. I look forward to doing business with you in the future. Thank you, but truth be told, I'm just a ranch hand. For now. Should I ever become a proper merchant, though, I'll be back to strike more deals with you. Hm. I love how... I thought she was tall, but I keep forgetting how tall my character is. <laughs> it's better than being a lala fell, if I have to say so myself. <laughs> Excellent trade. Yeah, wow. Success. You trade a 5,000 pell sack of top grade mate leaves for a 10,000 pell jug of premium mezcal. Yeah, trading. Ma Blue, how are you doing? Master Gobley's praise makes me confident I could be a peddler after all. Well, a bit more confident than before, at least. Gobley, want to say anything? I'm more, I'm satisfied with our trade, and I trust you are too. Should you need uh, more mescal, you know who to come to. Walk them up. Ah, ooh, dies. Walk them up in the saddle. Walk them up is ready to return to Havli. Even at the palace, I didn't. I don't think I've held a 10,000 pell jug of anything before. My hands won't stop shaking. Here, you better hold on to it until we get to that sal maker. Okay, thank God. I was worried that she would actually drop it. Aha! Uh -huh. Can you imagine? Don't! No! Bad Ma Blue. Can you imagine if we dropped it and had to start all over again? Luckily, Havli's place is not far. Just have to cross the plaza. Don't do that to me. Also, let's read. A high quality jug of mescal you received for trade for the... Oh, okay. Yeah, not much there, really. I swear up, it's like you tripped and dropped the jug. Oh no, it can go bad so fast. Ma Blue, the third promise looks ready to trace. I want to give her the jug. No, don't, don't give her the jug. I got a feeling bad thing about to happen. Don't do it. They kept foreshadowing her being a klutz. This is it. The trade been look working. Oh no, no, don't. Please don't do what I think you're about to do. Oh, still one piece. Right, time to make our deal. Oh, it's going to a cutscene. Okay, I think we're fine. Okay, I over exaggerated for nothing. Get your tools ready, Sadler. We brought you a precious mezcal. Not gonna lie, I was worried something bad was gonna happen to that on the way here. Wait, you actually got your hands on a jug. But you had nothing. A few measly clumps of wool. Well, we had 
We had an aspiring trader with a gift of negotiation. <laughs> oh, he's not happy. But trade's a trade. Although I'd sooner aid no claimant, but this is Zoral Ja. I can't go against the guiding principles of the Pelu Pelu. The trade is a fair one. I will craft your saddle, third promise. Great! Stay and wait if you like. I have to re uh, have the requisite materials, so this won't take long. Uh. Ooh, backstretch. <laughs> Move the mic a bit away from me. I got a feeling we're gonna get an alpaca mount from this, maybe. Your commission is ready. Catching a wild alpaca is never a simple affair, but you'll have an easier time with one of my saddles. Now, if you don't mind, I have other work that needs to be needs finishing. Ah, oh, I can taste that smooth mezcal already. We did it! The saddle's ours, but we still have to get the alpaca, so chill a little. And to think we started with only a hundred pelt basket of alpaca wool. Mablu, you are going to be an incredible merchant. Thank you. It makes me so glad to hear you say that third promise. We got what we came for, so let's return to the ranch. The others are, will be waiting. Yay! Success, you traded the 10,000 Pell Jug of Premium Mescal for Teeming Saddle. But yeah, I have a feeling this is gonna lock in a pack amount if I'm not. Oh, she has the. Never mind. Oh, right, because she has to capture it, so never mind. Also, uh, I think I'm gonna dismiss, dismiss you for now, Choco, as sad as that is. Oh, now what I wanted. Goodbye, Choco. See you later. And where's the uh, oh withdraw? There you go. Goodbye. See you later, boy. All right. Oh, someone has the firebird. Aha! That proves me correct. They are riding an alpaca mount at level ninety. And it has the saddle that we just got. So, yep, this is going to give us a mount. Cool. Walk them up. Let's tell them the good news. Mablu. Looks like everyone's been pitching in with the Aparkas. Aaronville. You've been away for some time. I'm assuming trading was productive? A little bit. Alize. I, ma I made the mistake of startling one, of the, uh, one and caught a glob of spittle for my trouble. I'm beginning to understand Wakulmut's aversion to the animals. Oh, whoops, that was an accident. Ryle, how you doing? Tobli and Erinville have been teaching us how to care for alpacas. One gentle girl ate the feed straight from my hand. Alright. Alphanode, we have to talk to you about something. You acquired the saddle, then? Yes, and thanks in no small, small part to Mabalu. Before you rush off and catch the alpaca, though, let me teach you how to saddle one. I'll bring one out of our wild-born friend. I'll bring out one of our wild-born friends so you can practice. Oh, we got sparklers going off outside. Probably kids in the street. <laughs> I know, I know. This is something I need to learn. God, look at it, it's so dangerous. <laughs> this is the final boss. This is where the end of the expansion is. Spit, spit, spit. Great sunken gods, I did it. Oh, look at he looks happy. 
He hardly seemed bothered, much less inclined to spit, as if he was completely accepting... You gave us a docile apaca, I got a feeling. Just saying, maybe. Or not, never mind. This is because of the singular scent with which the sandal has been coated. Alpacas find it very soothing. You know, I've never taken a good long look at one before now, but... You're actually kind of cute. Aww, you're only noticing that now. Zoral Jaws, he's back. Oh, he got a gold alpaca. Having done exactly what he set off to do. The alpaca he's brought, is it me or is it glowing? I've heard tales of such a beast. They say uh, the golden alpaca lives in solitarity, existent solarity, existence deep in the valley where it shuns the company of both man and its own kind. So he went and immediately got the rarest alpaca. Meaning we did all this kind of for nothing, sadly. How do you manage to snare a prize like that? A beast knows its betters. Faced with overwhelming strength, it will yield rather than risk death. An apt illusion of how greatly the power of the first promise exceeds yours, Wakula. Strength alone won't win him our father's throne. I'll be the one to find the Golden City. And then Toril can remain at peace. An everlasting desire for peace can only be forged in the fires of war. To unite as one, the people must be taught. They must suffer the honor and the hopelessness firsthand. Exhaustion from prolonged conflict, the wages of war, merciless nature. That is what moved the clans to join in the founding tur Tulial of those years ago. Consider the younger generation of this village. Since birth, they have vast and unbroken harmony. And behold, they regard war as not as tragedy, but opportunity. Thus does the resilient son seek to provide education. He offers much-needed lessons in the realities of conquest and renewed appreciation for peacetime. It is true that war's misery breeds a longing for peace. But I have seen with my own eyes what becomes of an empire forged through the violence you propose, the rebellions it spawns, and the ruins it leaves behind. Gar, yeah, the empire. Which is not in good shape. We've been there. The Garlean Empire was a congestion of simpletons. I would not say that. A lot of them were actually really smart. The opposed fought back against their oppressors. Well, so they should. Men are not beasts. Only a fool would seek to rule over all with the threat of force alone. This is why Galunjaja did not elevate the Mamulja, why he treated all clans with equal respect. However, the first promise has his gaze fixed upon the more distant horizons. He would unite not only Turliel, but the star in its entirety. Oh, that's not good. But why? I need not explain myself to you. Jesus, that was loud. Ooh, that firework went off. Not sure if you heard that bang. Whew. Oh, well done. Well done indeed. The first promise is completed the feat of the gold. With an oppor opportunity. Appropriately, my bad, I was about to say opportunately. With an appropriately golden flourish. May I present you your much deserved keystone? I see. He stepped in immediately to stop this going on. Well, he has the keys down. That sucks. Unless they have more. He 
He's always been like that, never sharing his innermost thoughts with me, or even with Kona. It's like we're not even family. To him, you're just adopted siblings. You're not blood. Well, that went places. I could never agree with Zoril Ja. I want Turlio to be the land of peace now and always. A golden alpaca on the flesh, like the golden city. I thought them all children's tale. Was that, eh? What kind of idiot thinks the world could be united with war? Even most Garleans have since realized that their conquests were a mistake. Yeah, it's like bringing down a giant red moon with a bah like a, a Bahamut or something. It's stupid. It wouldn't happen. Azaral Vaz is willing to go to war for his twisted vision of peace. But should he achieve this peace? But should he achieve this peace, then what? Yeah, no, that's the scary part. Off node. So much of our star has begun to embrace re reconciliation and rebuild. And this would be Warlord would thrust us back into turmoil. We cannot allow that to happen. I highly agree with that. I'll ponder Zoral Ja and his myst mysteries later. Right now, I need to think about finishing the Feast of Gold. I have my saddle, but I practice how to use it, so lead on and to where the wild apacas roam. The Valley of Orankanaka. Kan Or Oran? Kanka. Oran Kanka. Oran Kan Kan. Okay, sorry. Oran Kanka is northwest of here. Come on, everyone. Even if we can't enter ourselves, we can see Wakpama off on our hunt. To do this. I think this hunt will be the end of the episode. So, yeah. I think we might be able to finish them up here. Ah. Alright, we're mounting up. I'm not walking. Oh, enjoy the Final Fantasy IX battle theme, everybody. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Actually, I'm gonna bring out a mount. It's my fa one of my favorite battle themes from Stormblood. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find it. Ah, there it is. Is this one? Yep, this is it. Enjoy. Get. Oh, I love that battle theme. It's actually, it's really good. All right, let's do this. How deep do you think the valley is? I glanced over the edge on the way here, but the mist is too... Oh, you mean that's the valley? Um, yeah, no, that's decently thick mist. Uh, there's a chocobo on your, uh, all right, whatever. Aaronville? I never set foot beyond this point. Valley is said to be home to fiends far more ferocious than spitting alpacas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure more things in life are more deadly than spitting. Oh, the valley goes that way. Okay. All right, my blue. Oran Kankan, uh, Kon yeah, Oran Kanka is a steep and treacherous place, so only those with the head ledger's blessing are permitted to go there. Alize, Zoral Ja may have caught his. A pack at first, but that doesn't mean Wakulmont is out of the running. She can do this. Cryo. Maldalu's right. Oh, I wasn't knowing I was cheering her. Oh, at least we can do is let Wakulmont know we're cheering for her. Alright, guess we're cheering. Let me just see if I can find it. I'm too lazy to type it. Cheer, cheer, cheer. Ah. Hey, bro. I should talk to her before that. Oh well. Good luck there, promise! Thanks. I'll need it. Ah, okay. 
My bad. Truth be told, still not sure about alpacas. I'd rather not go near one if I can help it. But if I'm to rule this nation, then I'll need to learn how to live with them. The Tural is their home too. Get the alpacas. We'll put them in camps and slay them. Right. <laughs> I'm off. Ah, I'm joking. They're too fluffy. Their wool's useful. All right, off she goes. Let's see how well this goes. I take it I'm about to control so, her. Shall we head back to the ranch or? I'm gonna just do that. I'm staying here. As will I. What Clamart is alone in this? The least we can do is stand watch and await her return. It may be a while yet. Help me pitch the tent. All right. Now, am I going to gain control of her and have it be a instance thing? No. I guess not. I thought that'd be an instance thing where you run through like a small dungeon as walk them up. I guess not. Trust a gleaner to come prepared for anything. So that means I'm just gonna turn this back on. All right. What's a gleaner? Someone whose job it is to travel the world and procure uncommon things for their employers. Erinville specializes in finding animals, I believe. But aren't you a Shaitona from Shaktural? Why did you cross the salt? When I was much younger, the thought of leaving Tural never even occurred to me. But then, some years ago, my mentor tasked me with a difficult hunt. Something I could never find, she said. So long as I clung to the familiar. She suggested that I leave home, leave Tural, and join the cleaners of Charlian. As one of their number, I could experience the world, immerse myself in myriad cultures and customs, see the many faces of nature. And once I had learned what is truly important, I would find that which I seek. My younger self took those words to heart. And off I went to become a cleaner. Her words alone moved you to leave behind everything you'd ever known? You must have great respect for your mentor. As it happens, cleaner work was much to my liking. And I all but forgot why I had pursued it in the first place. Yet, events conspired to put me back on the trail I'd abandoned. Wait, are you saying you were tasked with finding this city of gold? I was. And though my hunt is now entangled with the right of succession, I mean to see it through. Well then, I understand completely. We all have our reasons for seeking the Golden City. Which is all the more reason for us to work together. <laughs> Just so. Aquamod's not back. Oh, looks like it might be morning. Holy cow, she was gone for a while, and her brother was gone for a couple hours. She should have been back by now. What if something's happened to her? We need to tell Tobli and arrange a search party. Yeah, easy there. Not yet. Wait. Do you hear that? No, I'm deaf. Oh. Damn, it's not gold. <laughs> I did it. Whew. 
You're utterly spent. And small wonder. Well done, third promise. The ranch isn't going anywhere. Take a rest in the tent. I think I will. Thank you all for believing in me. Now she got her alpaca rested in the tent. Oh, I think this is the end here. Uncle Ma has no serious injuries to, to speak of. However, she has clearly pushed, had been pushed to her the very limits of her endurance. I mean, she was out for an entire day. I spoke too much. If Uncle Ma is up to it, we should be heading back to Tobley. Alpha Node was quick to lend a hand with dismantling the tent. Is this to be his new obsession now, as he mastered collecting firewood? <laughs> He's can he swim? I don't think he can swim yet. We were out here for quite some time, but I'm glad Walk Lamont was able to catch her alpaca, and Aaronville choosing to share his story with us was a welcome surprise. Hey, how are you? Thanks to Elfno and his healing hands, I can actually stand again, maybe even walk. Well, we'll find out very soon when we try and go to the ranch. I'm so relieved that Third Promise came back to us safely. And the alpaca she tamed is healthy looking up healthy looking beast. Surely this will be enough to satisfy the feast of gold. I'm gonna take this. I run out of money. Alright. Knowing the Pelo Pelo. Ma Blue is minded to rush ahead to the village. Alright, I think this is gonna be the end, and well this one's gonna be a go, uh, longer than two hours. Uncle Mont still seems a bit unsteady on her feet. Hardly surprising after she spent the night chasing alpacas. Oh, he's doing the quest. He just cheered her on where that butterfly is. You know... Uh... Her, okay, you know what will melt her away her fatigue? Like magic, though? Make tea. I'll rush to the ranch and get pot brewing. That you can take your time to... Uh, you can get... The Holy cow! You... The, that way, you can take your time, and the tea will be ready when you arrive. I can't read a sentence. There's something wrong with me. As my blue so wisely she suggested, we should set a slower pace for our exhausted third promise. I'm gonna sprint there or teleport. I'll see you guys later. Oh, never mind. You're all leaving me. Let me see. How far is that? I mean, it's literally right there. I'm not gonna bother teleporting. Alpaca. 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 I'm gonna have to change my outfit one day. Even though I really like this set. I believe it's a level 90 set, and it's actually just slightly under this set. I think it's a 645 I am ranking. But I do like the look of this set. It looks real nice. It is the one second. Allegiance set, is it? No, sorry. The Diablox Diadachos Diadachos set. I like it quite a bit. Don't do it. I warned you not to do it. Oh. Also, I know I shouldn't have popped that after I finished the combo, but oh well, things happen. Oh wow, you're actually tanky. Alright, you're. I am missing my attacks on you. Oh, now that is interesting. And you didn't blind me, but I was missing. Yeah, I was missing my attacks on that one quite a bit. Holy cow. He must have been a special one. Yeah, off screen, uh, I'll probably just be doing my dailies, and then I'll do some of these just to get my uh, fate rank up in this area. I might try and do that in this expansion, because I think the only one I kind of did was Shadowbringers, but 
you already know what happened there. I did some of those, and M. Walker, I basically just completed the DLC came out. Ah, Blue. Come back ahead from, of the others, did you? No, they left before me. I should hurry along with the tea then. Walk Lamont can't be that far behind. They came before me. How did I beat them? I can go for some tea right now, even though it's a little late for me. Mm. Caffeine does not do anything for me. I'll drink it because it tastes good. Also, a good herbal tea. Hmm. Well, that tea is really magical. I feel better already. I like a mixed berry, non-caffeine herbal tea with some uh, agave oil in it. It's really good. I see you become more confident around our fuzzy friends. Look at those eyes of death. Watching this one taught me a lot about alpacas. Watch as grasses. What, what, oh. What grasses and fruits they eat, what sounds they react to, their adorable little quirks. I guess I've grown kind of fond of them. So, yeah, unlike her brother, her brother immediately went and brute forced it, got the gold alpaca left. She actually watched the alpacas and learned about their habits and everything to get to know them better. Hmm. Welcome back, Third Promise. Accomplished the feat of gold, have you? <laughs> Look at that guy in the background just shimmering. Hmm, yes, there's no mistaking a valley of Paca. I commend you on your success. Well done. Yes, we did it! Although I couldn't find a shiny one like Zoral Ja did. I'd be surprised if you had. Golden alpacas are born but once every few decades. They are elusive, solitary creatures that are rarely seen, much less captured. Thanks to their innate physic uh thanks to their innate in uh innate physical and magical gifts. I want golden alpaca. Only a single other person is known to have caught one before, that being Gulu Jaja himself. Oh, I was chasing alpacas too. So my grandfather's stories say. It was before the founding of Tuliel, in the time when the mountain giants of Yokui held our people in thrall. Compelled by their overlords, our forebearers would ride their alpaca mounts to the highlands to deliver gifts and food and other tributes. Those were wretched days to hear grandfather tell it. Then along came a young Gulu Jaja, yet unburdened by the mantle of Dawn Servant. Oh, you can see his other head. Our people were amazed by the imposing two-headed figure, equal to the Yakhoi in st stature, and puzzled by his entourage of mismatched companions. I think I see the human that might be there or there, hiding behind the fist. Maybe, I think that, no, I think that's a woman, so it must be that guy, because that's a Rothgar. Goblin. All right. Some trouble and fear believing a new conqueror had come. Yet Ghoul Jaja showed no inclinations. He sat and spoke with us, sipping from the cups of mate tea we offered him, and grew somber when he learned of our plight. None could have anticipated what their visitors decided to do next. Ghoul Galu Jaja ascended the cliffs to face the giants and free the Palu Palu from the Yakhoi's subjug subjugation. He then turned an appraising eye upon our riders and proposed we take the road to peddle our beverages. The suggestion seemed obvious for one who traveled as he did, intent on fostering amenity between the clans. Alright, let's see. Anyone important here? No, just you, Goblin, and... I still can't see your face. That's a, I think that's a woman. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to keep an eye out, but pick out characters, just in case. So, as a few words from G Gulu Jaja transformed us into a clan of in internet merchants. I've never heard that the bond 
Papa Forge with the Palapello spoken of in that way before. The saga is not so detailed. Then you may not know that Gulu Jaja saw a sure-footed guide for his trek up into the highlands. Thus did he capture a golden alpaca. So, both my brother and my father caught the rarest creatures. Ah, but your father caught it to help the people. Your brother caught it just to, you know, move forward his conquest in a way. While an ordinary one was the best I could have managed. The feat required no more than that, Third Promise, and you brought back a perfectly wonderful beast. Mabalu's right. You're a perfectly wonderful beast. If anyone's ordinary, it's me. Not only did you accomplish the feat of gold, you also made many trades and brought joy to many people in the true Palo Palo fashion. I sorely doubt your sibling could have achieved the same result. Yep. You learned more about the Palo Palo. You actually traded and all that. You should be proud of the the accomplishments which earned you your keystone yay i'm actually happy i did this one first this is a good little series of stories so this is what they look like you saw your brother get it well actually it might have been small enough she couldn't see it go on set in the tablet now, what happens? Does it glow, or does it just sit there? And hopefully it locks in place so it doesn't fall out. Oh, it, it actually glows. A perfect fit. That leaves six more. Man, we're almost done with the story already. Man, it's flying by. You're well on your way, Third Promise. And now it's time for you to talk to him. We'd been lost without you, Mablu. Thanks to you, I've learned so much about Pelu people and your customs. It might seem obvious, but I've come to realize the importance of properly knowing something. It was because I, I didn't understand alpacas that I was uncomfortable around them. Yeah, I'm thankful to you as well, Waklama. You gave me the courage to say what I wasn't sure I could ever say. Here we go. And he's gonna be proud of you. Probably. I want to leave the ranch and become a merchant. I appreciate everything you've done for me. I loved every moment caring for the alpacas. But this is something I need to do. I need to walk my own path and make my own trades. As your parent, allow me to say one thing. I've always tried to give you my wards. I always, oh, sorry. I always tried to give my wards lives filled with much happiness as I could provide, yet never once have I wanted them to... Ha I never... Yet, never once I wanted that to be only the only happiness you knew. You have my blessing to walk any path you choose, Mabalu. It gladdens me to hear that you found a calling you wish to pursue with such passion. It will make an exceptional peddler, I'm sure of it. Thank you, Tobly. What did I tell you, Mablu? There's one last thing I can help you with, Third Promise. You need to find the Golden City, right? That's the end goal. And I suggest you talk to y the Yaki Hoi. Uh oh, the Giants. They once ruled over far more than just. Oh no, Urki Urko Paka and the Pelopelo. A thousand years ago there were the overloads of Yaktoral and all the peoples. During the era, the Pelopelo were commanded to search for the city a city of gold. They scoured every corner of the continent, but never found any trace of that fabled place. But if they didn't find anything, what could the uh, Yakhoi have tell us? They may not have found it, but the fact that they thought to look for it at all makes me curious. Perhaps there's perhaps there's value in delving into how the legend originated. Yeah, then 
the question is, is how did the Giants hear about it? Maybe there was a drawing or uh, another like totem type thing, a carving showing a depicting a city of gold. We lose nothing from asking questions. Beside, if we're de oh Jesus, I can't talk. Beside, if we're determined to follow the path of the saga, we'll be visiting the Giants eventually. The giants who just secluded themselves were that thing her father fought and sealed away is. Oh, Kryle, I have a question I've been meaning to ask you. And since we finished with the feet, where did you acquire that earring? My earring? Do you recognize it? Yes, pieces just like that, uh, just like it, first became fashionable in Yocturral around 20 years ago. Since then, it be it's become common to wear one as a charm for safe travel. So, 20 years ago, right about the time my grandfather made his journey, yet the Dawn Servant implied the earring was connected to the Golden City in some way. Surely there's more to its significance than simple fashion. If you want to know how it first ca uh, came to be crafted, I could find out. Seeing as it's a regular seller for many merchants, I'm curious to learn about myself. I would appreciate that very much. Thank you. Jumping feet first into peddler's business, eh, Mablu? Right then, let's head back to Turiel. And, uh... Get ready to search for the next Elector. Which will be the uh, bird people, I believe. Farewell for now. Thanks for your help. I will become Dawn Servant, so make sure you set aside your best mescal for the occasion. She has a fearsome opponent in that brother of hers. He even brought a golden pack of the heel. But you heard Zoral Jha's supporters talk. They might see opportunities expand expansionist a bit ambitions, but they but they find the man himself intimidating, terrifying me. Whereas I've grown to love Waklama, everyone she meets will come to love her too, and that's why she'll win the throne. You might be right, Mablu. You might be right. Okay. Uh, it's snowing? Not gonna lie, I wasn't expected to snow, but then again, we are in high altitude. Okay. Ryle, how you doing? I never dared to hope we find a lead on the, for the earring so quickly. Arnville? Four legged troubles aside, Walk the Monk completed the feat and earned Keystone. That's all that matters. Alpha node. The Yakhoi once ruled the entirety of Yakturl. I'm curious to see what has become of them. I, mean, I have a feeling they no longer exist and maybe are all wiped out. I expected as much from the moment I saw him, but winning the contest against Zoral Ja will not be easy. Alright. It feels good to have the Fiat Gold safely under our belt, even if my victory pales beside Zoral Ja and his shiny golden alpaca. I know I shouldn't let it bother me, but gods know you've all been so supportive. I want to be strong, or wise, like my brothers, to be a promise that people respect. Which is not likely if I stand here carrying on and on about things. Let's move on. Back to... Oh, God. Valiv T with us. The contest has hardly begun. Alright, I'll see you there. Oh, no. I'm gonna have to do these later. I'm gonna finish this quest. I'm gonna finish this quest so I can call it. It's also 11-12. Yeah, I should probably lie down soon. I'm not a young man anymore. Uh, wait. You know what? I'm just gonna... Aether point. 
Oh, the music was confused. It started playing the day theme and then night immediately hit. Ah. Uh, all right, we're back. I'll be talking to you next. But next time I'm saying it now, I'm gonna beat this quest and all that. Also Viper, really nice blades. Uh, and then I'm going back to do those quests with the plus marks because they're gonna be important. Or I'll do those later and just do the Hanu. All right, Alice Day, how you doing? The Peller remind me of Lalafell, never letting their size slow them down or hold them back. They move at their own pace, making their textiles and mezco and raise alpacas to bear their market. Yeah, I guess. Neither Kona or Bukal Jaja appear to be in Wakapello. I imagine they're, they're around somewhere, making progress even as we are. I've heard there are hot springs in Orkipaka. May half the time permitting. Aaronville? A golden alpaca alone. I may have tried to track the beast myself. Just like that, we found an elector and won our first keystone. I knew I was right to trust your instincts. Come on, let's keep things moving and march onwards to Kazmauka. Chances are good we'll find a lecture there as well. Before we do anything, however, we should see how patient your Hanu friend has to say. Um, Alright. And we're level 91, baby. Alright. And that is going to be it for this episode. Next time, we shall begin with a Hanu. Or the side quests in that one area, now that I think about it. Yeah, we'll do the side quests in that area next. I want to get them out of the way. I know I'll be back in that area one day because you always have to go back to the areas because look at, look at how much I explored in my first place being here. Only that much. There's way more. I thought there was a village down there with its own crystal, but I'm not worried about getting that now. I'm going to do these quests next time, and I'm going to start doing some fates around here, maybe. Just to, you know, probably as the... Oh, hello, game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, okay. I think we're good. Uh, my... Ah. Okay, I'm just gonna call this one here. Yeah, as you can see, the lag is serious right now. Oh, wait. Oh, they're filling out. There we go. Yeah, the music's also breaking. All right. I'm gonna call this one here, though. I'll see you next time. We'll do these two side quests. They are important for me. If they're Aetherite Currents, which, by the way, I did get an Aetherite Current off screen. It was just on the rock over there. But yeah, until then, I'll see you next time, and we will continue. And our adventure... And goodbye, good night, farewell, au revoir, and all that jazz. I'm going to bed.